want to bring in market watcher David Bonson. All right, David, uh, the consumer sentiment number, what we're seeing with the markets, the overall picture, what do you make of it? The consumer sentiment number is one of the last things we would ever look at. We think it's a t classic lagging indicator. And we really believe that business confidence is a far more important metric of where productivity is going and therefore earnings that follow. So we want to be kind of ahead of the curve, not looking backwards. Um, on that note, uh, do you also, the small business as well, NFIB? I, th those are absolutely two of the most important indicators you can get, the small business confidence and then overall business okay. uh, sentiment. And I think that those things are telling you what's going on in the economy and in the productive aspect of the economy, where innovation is and where profit growth comes from. It's overwhelmingly positive. It's been a crazy week for the markets, uh, unnerving in, in part because we've gotten used to sort of this, uh, you know, idyllic, you know, uh, you know, markets either up a lot or down a little. Does it does it tell us anything? Is this a sort of a harbinger or of things that to come with respect to perhaps the economy? It tells us two things. First and foremost, that most people, when they tell you why the market down a thousand points, have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> And, and secondly, it tells you and reminds you that market volatility is part of being an equity investor. Um, you know what I really think that a lot of this has to do with? Italian bond spreads blowing out. Uh, the China won to the dollar being at a high. It's been over 10 years. Uh, the fear about them labeling China a currency manipulator, which is one of the worst things they could do. They are a currency although, manipulator. Although, although they probably won't do that, right? The White they House probably won't. back against it. Everybody that. threatens, nobody does it. Right. And, and I'm not saying they're not a currency manipulator. I'm saying everybody is a currency sure, manipulator. Sure. So my point being, you have global conditions that are not good, U.S. conditions <laughs> that are very good. In the market this week, you had an unbelievable amount of leverage trades unwind in the hedge fund world, and I understand it. And, and investors need to be used to it. It's part of being an investor. So an investor would say to you, if our economy economy is so great. Why do we care about Italy? Do we, don't we have an economic moat around us? And they're not necessarily our biggest trading partner. Um, well, Italy is not. But Italy's bond spreads relative to Germany are telling you the entire European Union is just in a completely tepid state of economic growth. Uh, the China factor is far bigger, okay? But, you know, your S&P 500 revenues are somewhere between 43 and 47 percent global. So nobody can act like all that matters is us. What matters is capital flows. This is going to end up helping U.S. markets. Capital will come back into the U.S. I have no doubt about that. But along the way, this volatility is to be expected when you get these types of incidents. Yeah. And I think that we got a good reminder of it this week. Sometimes markets go up and they go down. More buyers and sellers. Hey, let me ask you about the earnings this morning. Yeah. Uh, we got a smattering of them. On the surface, they look like they were mixed. Uh, what do you think? Well, again, they're mostly concentrated in the financial sector. We're big owners of J.P. Morgan. J.P. coming into this was one, the only super bank that was up on the year already. It's up more this morning. Um, I think that it was very positive. But people, again, I think are looking to the wrong things. We're not looking to bond desk activity. We're not looking to anything other than what are they saying about economy going forward. Loan growth. And then you see what J.P. Morgan raising the dividend 43 percent. I think that ultimately the financials this year have been very contra market. And I believe that if you can't have it both ways. If you think our interest rates are going higher, that, that widening yield curve is good for the big banks. But they have gone higher and the banks have underperformed. You just made that well, they, point. But they've gone higher in the last couple of weeks as far as a, a, a spread, a widening out of the yield curve. That's a very recent phenomenon, not reflected in these earnings. But almost every brilliant mind on Wall Street in January said this is the year rate Rates go up. It's a no-brainer that you should own these stocks, these bank stocks, yeah. particularly these large money center kind of banks. And they have been a disappointment. They have. And I think part of the uh, problem with that prediction was believing that all these banks trade together to begin with. Okay, you go back to 2011, you have some of these banks that are basically the same price they were there or very <clears> close <throat> to it. J.P. Morgan is up, I believe, 250% since then. All of these banks are differing, different operating businesses. And that's something I think a lot of the analysts have missed. I would rather buy the regional banks if all you're trying to buy is net interest margin, if you're trying to buy a widening yield curve. Then you could buy BBT. You could buy those regionals. Um, but I think that within the big banks, it has a far bigger impact from the overall economy. Right. And J.P. Morgan's the leader in that space. Right, let me ask you, uh, because I know you like old tech, not, yeah. not the new tech names, but you like the old old, uh, the original horsemen of technology. Yeah, the ones that make money. <laughs> the ones that the, the ones that make money. The, does IBM make money? IBM makes a ton of money. IBM gives a lot of it back to shareholders. IBM doesn't grow.
grow the profits the way that real big growth companies do. That's the problem is IBM is a utility. IBM has their old line business. But you like the stock, though. Well, because it's so cheap on a price earnings basis. It's a good value play. And then I believe that they are generously growing the dividend shareholders. They're doing it from free cash flow. They're not tricking us. And then they do have growth catalysts out there in blockchain and in cloud and other businesses. Shouldn't they be more aggressive on that? I mean, over the last 10 years, they've poured billions of dollars into stock buybacks, which it seems like, considering the stock performance, a massive waste. They could have been making acquisitions. They could have been doing more yeah. things to be a player in hot areas. I mean, are you, are you convinced with current management that they aren't moving too slowly? It feels like they are holding on to some of these businesses that they should be shedding and not being aggressive in areas. I don't believe be that they should be shedding those old businesses. And you look at Cisco and Intel as great examples. These stocks have made new highs this year as a result of those old businesses providing the cash flow fodder for them to grow into new businesses. Both Cisco and Intel are proving it can be done. Am I convinced IBM's management will pull it off? Of course not. There's risk in that thesis. But I'm getting paid while I take the risk. I got about a 4% dividend yield, a stock trading below 15 times. So to me, it's a good value play, and that's what we are, right. dividend and value. Any, any, of the, any of the newest, newest tech you like, any of the, the names? Because everyone comes on the show, you got to buy Facebook on the dip, you got to buy Netflix on so the dip. such you an incredibly Amazon bold the... call of them. So they come on the show mm-hmm. and they say, buy Amazon? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's courageous. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I don't buy stocks at 183 times earnings. I don't okay. buy stocks without earnings. It's just us. We've missed out on a lot of gains in those names. I freely admit it, but we don't. But you still look good. We, well, that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> we, you look great. Thanks a lot, David. Appreciate it.